G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's video we're going to be running through some of the common pests you may find in the aquaponics system like that one there and also some ways to treat them so you can get more of the tasty veg for yourself and not have to share it with those blighters. Now the methods we use to treat the pest in aquaponics um, tend to have to be organic mainly because of these little fellas down in here these are basically the one of the drivers of the system the fish that produce the waste so we need to make sure whatever we use in the system over there to treat the pests doesn't enter the water itself and create issues for the health of the fish. So for that reason, all the treatments we use for the pests in the system have to be fish friendly and preferably also amphibian, reptilian and mammal friendly as well because we have those animals all interacting with the systems, birds, lizards, frogs and us humans when we eat the fish and the plants themselves. Seeing as we were photobombed by a cabbage butterfly in the intro, I thought we'd start with caterpillars. All we have there is a cabbage butterfly caterpillar. And on this leaf up in here, we have a cluster caterpillar just behind that little webbing there. Uh, those guys there are actually quite invasive and ca can cause a lot of damage, so we'll deal with them first. Uh, they're from a moth and it doesn't take long for them to strip leaves. We actually had a fairly bad infestation of those caterpillars on the um, chili plant here, as you can see by all the small holes in the leaves. I actually found one of the nests on one of the leaves here. What it looks like is a load of tiny small eggs, probably hundreds of them. And once they hatch, they get a voracious appetite and they can devour a cabbage like this one here in a matter of days. And as you saw from the intro, the other pest caterpillar we get here is the white cabbage butterfly caterpillar. Uh, they're pretty common all around the world. Now these little fellows, they like to come in and lay their eggs on the undersides of leaves. Uh, they're pretty easy to spot. They're just a very small white dot. And yeah, I just go along and just squish them when I find them. We actually have a little parasitic wasp buzzing around. I will mention a few other beneficials, but those little wasps, um, they lay eggs within the caterpillars themselves. The eggs then hatch and eat the caterpillars juicy bits and then they pupate on the outside of the caterpillar before flying off and repeating the process. So they're great to have around. One of the reasons I don't like using a lot of sprays. So to protect the plants from caterpillars you can use a couple of different methods. You can exclude them by maybe growing in a greenhouse. Another way you can go is using fish and animal friendly insecticides. I use one called Dipole. It's basically made of a bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis, and it is very safe to use in your system here. It only targets specifically these guys here. The one we buy here comes in a sachet with 10 grams of the powder in it, enough to make up 10 litres of the spray. Now there's no way I need 10 litres of um, spray for this size bed. So what I've done is I've weighed out um, individual little bags with two grams worth of powder in them. That means I can just whack it in my little two litre spray jug and go around not only the aquaponics but the other beds down the back just to give them a little bit of protection. Now you will notice that the spray does tend to roll off the leaves. Don't worry about that. There will be enough bacteria left on there. So when the caterpillar eats it, it will get into its gut and do it in from the inside out. So it is very safe to have in your system and very effective. Now, um, looking at these leaves, you may not think that, but the, these plants here are exposed to the rain. They're outside from underneath the deck. We have had a bit of rain lately. So every time I do spray the dipole on here, uh, within a couple of days, it just gets washed off from the rain. And another method we like to use is manual removal. Basically going through the plants themselves, picking off the caterpillars, and then taking them over for a bit of a snack in the fish tank. Our plants here do look a little bit manky. That's because I've been growing through our summer just for the leaves. We've been using them in the cooking. We're just coming into our cool season now, and that's when we like to grow the heading brassicas, like the cauliflower and broccoli. So these guys here will be coming out in the next week or so for some new seedlings to go in. Now these grasshoppers are one pest that I don't have a control for, unfortunately. Uh, the main thing I do with these guys is try and catch them and not let them go and feed them to the fish. Unfortunately, there's no controls that I know that I can spray on here that would be fish friendly. I know pyrethrum will knock them off when they're young, but unfortunately pyrethrum is one that I would not recommend you use in your aquaponic system, mainly because it's very toxic to the fish um, once the levels get up there, so I stay away from it. Just a quick reminder for you aquacurious folks out there who haven't made the plunge yet and started your own aquaponic system. I do have a guide, a beginner's aquaponics guide available. It is an online interactive guide to help you on your aquaponics journey. Uh, it comes in a multiple different languages, English, of course, Portuguese, Spanish, 
um, Hindi and also Chinese as well. Uh, transcribed is in the text and also there is um, someone translating over the top of me on the videos themselves as well. So if you're interested in that you can check it out by clicking on that little link up there and there will also be a link in the description down below. Now back to the pests. Just back at this bed here to give you a look at another pest that we get quite a bit in the system and that is aphids. So these little guys here are sap suckers and can be a real pain in the butt to control. Some varieties the females are self fertile so they just keep popping out young after young after young without having to mate. These guys can be controlled in a number of ways. Um, I'm rather partial to just coming in and squishing them uh, when I see just small amounts like this on a plant. Uh, other things you can do is make up a basic soap spray using one to two teaspoons of a pure soap in one litre or that's a quart for you folks in the States worth of water. Uh, giving that a bit of a mix up and um, yeah spraying on the plants. Apparently it washes off the waxy coating from the outside of the aphid and they dry out and the same treatment can be used on thrifts and mealy bugs as well if you have issues with them. Now along with the soap spray you can use other sprays as well like horticultural oils or even a neem spray that contains azadictarin. Just be careful though not to over spray into the water that can make it back to the fish because it can coat their gills and suffocate them. You may want to lay some newspaper down underneath the plants themselves and then spray and let the paper catch any excess that falls on the grow beds. And as long as you're just targeting, you know, individual little outbreaks like that, you should be right. I do know folks who will spread diatomaceous earth on these guys as well. I don't like to use that in the system because we have other little beneficials in here that I really don't want to kill. Uh, fellas like, whoa, he nearly fell off. This little baby um, ladybug. That's called a ladybug nymph. And these little fellas, they can look after a number of those aphids every day, as can their parents. So they're really good to have around in the system. And one of the reasons why I don't like spraying too much. I mean, if you get a really bad um, infestation, you can use the squish method. Um, squish all that you can and then blast them with the water hose. Um, just the hose from the tap is good enough as long as you don't get too much in your system. And that will just crush the aphids and the mealybugs and the thrips because they are a soft bodied insect. But I prefer to encourage these guys. As I said, these plants will be coming out of here soon. So I prefer to uh, boost up the ladybug numbers, let them have a bit of a feast and um, yeah, hopefully they'll multiply within the system. Just as a bit of an afterthought, I thought I'd tell you about these little black aphids I had issues with on our Chinese chives. They basically became resistant to the mint spray, the mint soap spray that I was using on them and I couldn't get them under control. So I decided to take drastic action, which basically involved removing them from the system hitting them with a high pressure hose, just a garden hose in reality, but that's enough to crush those little aphids as I mentioned before. Gave it a bit of a haircut and then I just popped the plant back in the hole it came out of in the system itself. Now I did see a number of aphids on there the next morning but I have a feeling a lot of them would have crawled up from the media as I knocked them off when removing the plant itself. Uh, I did get them under control. There was always one or two on there. Um, so I decided to take a recommendation from a fellow viewer and purchase some Pure Crop One. It is still a soap based spray, but it is designed specifically for aphids and mite and soft bodied insect controls. It works really, really well. This isn't an ad for the company. I'm not sponsored, but it is just a product that I found works so well that I will be using it in future on these black aphids in particular and also mites. Um, on the green aphids though, I found I can pretty much all keep them under control just with the basic mint soap spray. So just so I give you a bit of a heads up about that. And just one more point about aphids, sometimes they're actually farmed by ants. What the ants do is they will protect the aphids and in return uh, the aphids excrete a um, sweet honeydew like substance for the ants. So if you have a lot of ants in the system around the aphids, it might be an idea to try and control them. You can do that by uh, periodically flooding the grow beds and that will disrupt any um, nest that the ants have in the media if that's where they're nesting. So on to another pest and no mic, it isn't a toilet paper tree mate. Um, this is our RG Amarillo and we've started to be visited by a common pest here in southeast Queensland and other warmer parts of Australia, the Queensland fruit fly. What they do is they sting the fruit there and then the um, little maggots get in there and eat out the fruit from the inside. They hit citrus as well as our mangoes too, so a real pain in the butt. Normally what happens is the bush, for some reason, um, you can see a little sting mark there, will just drop the fruit. Luckily I've saved these two here before the fruit fly have emerged and they'll just go straight in the rubbish bin because we definitely don't want them hatching in the yard. 
So the best way I've found to keep these guys fruit fly free is to bag them, as you've already seen. Uh, thank you very much again, Ray, rest in peace, mate, and Kerry for sending these through. These are little paint strainer bags. Um, they're very common, very easy to find. And I've just used some little rubber tree ties just to secure them in place. And that's enough to keep the Queensland fruit fly and the Mediterranean fruit, fruit fly um, from getting in and stinging the fruit. So uh, might help you guys out. And one of my supporters, Dave from Veneto Gardens, g'day, mate, uh, he's actually using the larger versions of these guys uh, to exclude insects from some brassicas he's trying to save some seeds from so they can be a bit of a multi-purpose tool and handy to have around I'm actually using a large paint strainer down the back to uh, bag up a whole branch of an RG Amarillo growing in a root pouch uh, just to keep a number of fruits safe so these little bags, they do work, but you might be able to see a couple down there. It's actually the start of a new season here, and I didn't get them on in time, and the Queensland fruit fly pretty much all stung the fruit, and they fell off the plant. So I've decided to trial something new from um, Yard and Farm Horticulture. Uh, they're a little pheromone uh, baited sticky trap. Uh, they're yellow as well, so they attract other uh, pests like aphids and white flies and that sort of thing. And so far, they went up last night and I've caught two Queensland fruit fly in that one. Another one uh, just uh, behind me here, it's only been up since this morning. And they also sell another product, which is a little sticky ball baited with the same pheromone. And I've got that underneath the mango tree. And I tell you what, it's absolutely covered. And I'm very impressed with how many fruit flies it's picked up. But then again, it is under the mango tree, which has got fruit on it at the moment. In the past, we've had issues with slugs in the aquaponics system. I used to come down at night and try and catch them in the dark when they're out and about. And at one point I was even trying beer traps. Now I found the beer traps, they worked all right. They got the slugs to come to the party, but unfortunately a lot of them had their full then stack it on home afterwards. The best method I found to collect the slugs was to raise the height of the standpipe so the water was over the top of the media in the bed. And this pretty much all drove all the slugs out of the media during the daytime where we could collect them and then dispose of them. So now onto some beneficials. You might be able to make out there we have a praying mantis. I don't want to disturb him too much. Um, but yeah, we also get beneficials in the patch. So that's another reason why I don't like to use harsh chemical sprays like the pyrethrum and things like that in here, uh, mainly because it will affect those guys as well. And those praying mantis, I mean, they can be really vicious. I've seen them tear apart grasshoppers in the old aquaponic system. In fact, when I find them um, hanging around the yard, I like to collect them and pop them into the system itself. In fact, when I was chopping it down some Chinese celtus the other day, uh, just to make up some compost in a cage, I found a couple of their uasikas, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, which are little praying mantis nests. So I've stuck one there in the aquaponics, and there is another one over here. I'm just sitting in some heavily pruned back kangkong, and hopefully those little baby praying mantis will emerge from there and take up residency within the system and look after future pests that might decide to have a crack at our veg. So I mentioned the parasitic wasps before. We do get other beneficial ones in the patch. Um, I've seen them come and collect little caterpillars like this little fella here and take them back to their nest, stuff them down the egg cell for the young to eat once they emerge. And I've also seen them feast on grasshoppers down at the back of the patch. Um, if you get a little bit too close, they may sting you, but I've found that the, all the varieties we see around the patch predating on insects are generally not very aggressive at all. So uh, another bonus insect to have around the patch. One of the other beneficial animals we've had in the system are little um, geckos, both the uh, native ones and the Asian house geckos. Now they'd be really good at knocking off things like grasshoppers and the like, but unfortunately they'd also feast on the um, praying mantis. But yeah, we have seen them crawling around the system from time to time. So folks, if you do use different control methods as I've used here, as I mentioned before, it'd be great if you could leave them in the comment section down below just to help others in the community out. We'd all really appreciate it. You know, even if it's just buying in ladybugs or something along those lines, it's always great to hear what other people do. As always, I would like to thank you all for coming along and sussing out the videos and leaving your thumbs up and the comments down below. I enjoy reading them all and responding to them all. I would also like to thank those awesome folks supporting us through the YouTube membership platform and our own Farm Your Own Yard membership website. Thanks for all the support, folks. We really do appreciate it. But I will pretty much all leave it there. My arm's getting a bit shaky. I do hope you're all well and happy and your aquaponics is booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one. I'm trying to film and this cheeky bugger keeps hanging around. I think it's actually trying to lay eggs on some of the different brassicas around here.
That's exactly what she's doing. She just laid an egg right there. Cheeky bugger.